Um, sweet. All right. So that's kind of like how we integrated the weather API. Now let's go back and, um, or actually you'll see here as I'm updating uh, the time, um, it's not actually updating the animated background. Um, as you saw in Michael's state machine, if I go back here, uh, as we messed with the time, uh, you'll see like the shadow changes, the sun is shifting positions and you've got this kind of blend state that's um, um, changing along with the day. And uh, uh, I forgot if you mentioned this, Michael, this is, this is a, a range from zero to 23 so on a 24 hour schedule. So um, we wanna be able to have our app uh, do the same and react accordingly. So that's kind of uh, what we're all here for, right? <laughs> um, so let's go back to our get weather data. And as soon as we fetch the data, let's start setting some of these inputs from the state machine um, so that we can uh, actually advance the state machine through the API response. And so if you recall, um, I created that Rive ref. I associated it to the Rive component that's rendered. So this Rive ref now holds a reference to the a inner API of this Rive component. And now if I go back to get weather data, I'm going to uh, set input states on the state machine. So if you look back into the docs, um, there's a, a sub tab here called Rive ref methods. Uh, basically, with that ref, you have uh, the ability to play animations, play state machines, pause things. Um, and in our case, we want to look at this set input state. Um, this is where we set the input value for the state machine. Um, and you'll notice it takes three different parameters, a state machine name, the input name that we want to set in the state machine, and then the value that we want to set on that input. So. Um, Let's start looking at, for example, the cloudy property. Again, cloudy is a Boolean um, input here. And so we are going to uh, set that. So riveref.current, so you get access to the API. And now we're going to take that um, set input state. And again, we have three, um, three parameters we need to provide it. The first is state machine name. Excuse me. Uh, I'm actually going to be reusing the state machine a lot, uh, state machine name. So I'm going to create a constant up here. State machine name is equal to state machine one. Sweet. All right. And now, again, I want to work with the cloudy input. Now the third thing we need is the value. So the value in this case is a Boolean. If we look into the weather API data response that comes back, um, I'm going to look at the current, which is just the current forecast. This is the current object. Um, again, you'll see it supplies us with an amplitude of data. Um, this is the current property that we want to look for, though, cloud. Um, and sorry, just to zoom in here, it might be a bit small. Um, Cloud is represented as a number. Uh, with the weatherapi.com's uh, documentation, this is basically a percentage from like zero to 100 that shows off like the percentage of cloud coverage uh, over a given hour. Um, and so we need to figure out a way to make this number be a Boolean value for our state machine input. So uh, for the purposes of this demo, let's just say that if cloud coverage is greater than 20%, um, then it's going to be cloudy in our animation. So we'll take JSON data dot, I'm going to again, again, I'm taking that current object dot cloudy, wait, cloud, and say if it's greater than or equal to 20, it's uh, going to be a Boolean value that's going to determine that cloudy um, input in the state machine. Um, so now let's go into the rainy input and do the same thing. So set input state. Set the state machine name. The input name we want to set is rainy. And then the value for rain. 
Now, in the current object, uh, brain, I think, is represented as precipitation. Um, so you can see here that it has two values, precipitation in millimeters or inches. Uh, for this demo, let's just work with precip mm in milliliters. And uh, this is pretty self-explanatory. It's a number based on how many milliliters of precipitation it expects. Um, so let's just say if it's greater than 1, we can make that a Boolean, um, because again, rainy is a Boolean. So let's do JSON, yeah, JSON data dot current dot, what is it? Recip mm is greater than or equal to 1. OK. Um, now we're getting somewhere. Uh, sweet. And what else do I want to do? I, uh, I also have this time property, this input, which is a number. Again, this is kind of representing the hour of the day. Um, let's just say, oh, actually, I want to do one more thing here. Um, I don't want to do this all the time. I want to do it if I, I don't want to set the input for cloudy and rainy in this method every time. I want to do it if weather data is not set yet. So basically, the first time I call into this API, let's set those state machine inputs. And you'll see why in a bit doing this. Um, at the same time, I also want to check if highlighted time is undefined. So again, the very first time we're running this or calling this function, I want to set this time input um, basically to the, the value of um, uh, the local current hour. So I can use, um, if you look up in, in part of this forecast response, it has this location object. And it has this local time epoch property, which gives a number of milliseconds. Um, so I'm going to use that uh, in addition to the uh, JavaScript date API to get the current hour. Um, you can look on like MDN JS docs to see how to use that date API. But I'm going to create a local variable here. Local time hours is a new date. I'm going to pull that JSON data dot location and then local time epoch property. Um, multiply that by a thousand and then do get hours so I can get the hours from zero to 23. Um, I'm going to set the highlighted time in that state variable. Then I also want to set this time input. So I'm going to do uh, arrive ref at current dot set input, input state. Again, uh, three things here. A state machine name. Uh, the input name I want to set is time. And then I want to set the value that we're going to use. Uh, so that's local time hours. Cool. So now we've uh, we've set three inputs here on our state machine. We have one left, which is is open. Um, and again, this is pretty much a property that toggles this box here. Um, this will kind of act as like a container um, visually for our scroll list to show all the hourly forecasts. Um, and if you look at this use effect function here, um, oh wait, no, not that one. Is loading data. Um, it's got this dependency on is loading data, so. By default, this is set to true. Um, so once this component loads, it's assumed that it's going to load in the weather API. But once everything is loaded in from the weather API in weather data, um, you'll see that we're setting it to false. So once, let's go to that use effect where you here and say if not is loading data. So once we're done loading data and we have arrive ref object, let's go ahead and set that is open property here. So arrive uh, ref dot current dot set input state, state machine name, uh, the, uh, the name of the input, which is is open. And this is a Boolean as well. So uh, in this case, we since the data has loaded, we just want to set it to true so that the box opens. 
All right. Now, if I, uh, where is my simulator? Open this, you'll see that, okay, we've got a different animated background because currently in Chicago, it is cloudy, probably. I, I don't know, my curtain's closed. Um, <laughs> and uh, so you can see that we set the input state on the state machine um, as soon as the data loaded in and it changed the animation accordingly. Um, and it set the time too, so it's not sunny anymore. We don't see any kind of shadow or sun. Um, and so, cool, we've, we've kind of set a, a number of different inputs here and we've got that is open, so the box, the container is open as well. Um, but there's one part that's missing here, which is um, as we're changing times, we're not actually updating the animated background, which is probably the more exciting part of this demo. So uh, we have to do one more thing here. Um, each of these rows, by the way, uh, if you go into the return method, is a we're iterating over each hourly forecast. Um, it's a touchable highlights component, which is a component provided by React Native. Um, and then we've kind of styled it to be a little opaque here. It's uh, we've had this we have this on press prop that we pass in, and uh, we basically pass it this on hour callback. So every time one of these hour boxes is pressed, we're we're calling this on hour click with that current hours data. So um, when I click five p.m., it's sending the data blob for this uh, given hour. I mean, you can see here in the API, um, we've got this hour array, uh, and it goes. It's based. There's 24 items in there. So uh, each each time we're clicking on a row, we're getting um, this blob of data into this callback on our click. Um, and you'll see that it, there's already some things fleshed out here. Um, we're setting basically the new hour. Had to do some funky math based on. Um, or not math, some parsing based on uh, the response they gave us. And we're setting that highlighted time. So here is where we're actually going to set the new inputs on the state machine, the new input values on the state machine based on the hour that we clicked. Um, and so we're going to do something very similar to what we did up here in get weather data, where we set the cloudy, the rainy, the time input. Um, but now we're going to do it with a new data set and it's going to be the data set based on the hour that the user clicked. Um, so again, we're going to do our little dance of state, And man, this is pretty repetitive. We probably could have turned this into a, like, a reusable utility method. <laughs> um, that would be good to add for the demo. So anyway, not going to because that's fine. Um, we're going to set the cloud input, I think. Yeah. Cloudy. And we're going to use the same logic. Basically, uh, if the cloud properties uh, value is, if it has more than 20% cloud coverage, we'll turn that into, we'll say that uh, cloudy is going to be true. So we're going to take that hour data that's passed in and set cloud is greater than or equal to 20%. Same thing with uh, arrive ref dot current. Uh, we're going to set that rainy input now. State machine name, rainy. And uh, actually, for the hourly data, interestingly, we get more properties. And so in here, we actually get this property called will it rain. Um, this is a number, and it's one if it's like yes, it will rain, or it's likely to rain, because weather is never accurate. Um, and it's zero if it's not likely to rain. Um, and so that's pretty much a Boolean. So we're just going to force that into a Boolean here. So we'll do our data dot will it rain. Um, force that into a Boolean. Sweet. And then uh, one last input we want to set is the time input here. And so we'll do that with our new time that we that we calculated from new highlighted hour. So arrive ref dot current dot set input state state machine name. The time input is what we want to set, and the value will be the new highlighted hour, which is the hour that the user clicked.
All right. Um, now, if I save that and look at the forecast. Cool. Now we've got an animated background that's changing according to the hour. You'll see that the sun is shifting, the shadow shifts as I uh, click through the different hours of the day. Um, and I think, I don't know if there'll be any more interesting ones. I know there was a cool radiant animation in clouds that you had, Michael. OK, there's a cloudy animation. Um, I want to show off rain. What's a rainy city? Probably like Anchorage? Maybe. <laughs> uh, there we go. OK, cool. We've got that rain animation. Um, I guess at 7 p.m., maybe it'll rain in Anchorage, Alaska. So we're showing that off. Um, and you can see, again, this is all driven by the data um, provided by that weather API. So um, you can see kind of the correlated um, interactive content here.